Next tonight, there are growing concerns over the mental health of young people in Oxfordshire. The latest figures show the number of 15 to 19-year-olds referred to mental health services in the county went up by 80% in the seven years to 2017. Figures also show that three out of four mental illnesses start in childhood and 75% of young people with a mental health problem are not receiving treatment. In a moment, we'll hear from Dan Knowles from Oxfordshire Mind. But first, David Lum's been to visit one school that's winning widespread praise for its approach to mental health in the classroom. Okay, confused. Can you explain to me why maybe you're confused this morning? Something happened? Everything in this room has been designed to reduce stress and allow students to relax. There's music, sand and cuddly toys. It's just one of the ways they're tackling mental health at this school in Oxfordshire. It's very stressful at times because you're always trying to fit in or you're trying, always trying to make people happy even though you may not be happy inside. Quite a few children like do have less stress and like most children don't show it, some children do. I think it's because like they're like focusing so much on like trying to follow the crowd. As well as specialist rooms, students here take part in daily breathing and relaxation exercises. Experts believe one in ten young people in Oxfordshire have a mental health illness but most of them aren't receiving treatment. Aurea School believes its methods are having results. We know it's working from year sevens last year after a week of three exams every day, came out of some of the exams and said when they had felt they just couldn't do any more, they couldn't cope, instead of walking out, they just did some mindful breathing. No one knew, they didn't need to ask an adult for help. They managed to cope themselves. The government's just announced plans to teach mindfulness exercises at 370 English schools to help students regulate their emotions. Aurea School has just received an award for its work to tackle mental health. Some believe the methods here should be rolled out across the county. David Lum, BBC South Today. Dan Knowles is from the charity Oxfordshire Mind and is with me now. Um, Dan, what do you think about what that school is doing? Yeah, I was lucky enough to go to the Aurea School this morning. Uh, I met some of the students. It was super, they, they were talking about mindfulness, and uh, a couple of them said how they've actually trained their parents. And uh, that boy, Patrick, was saying how he's helped his younger sister get to sleep through some of the mindfulness programmes that the school's been doing. So I applaud them. I think they're doing fantastic work. Do you think children today are suffering more with mental health problems than previous generations, or is it just that we're much more open about talking about it? Uh, uh, two, two issues going on there. I think there's definitely a, a, a greater acceptance of opening up about challenges, and that's really, really welcome. Uh, with that come more people going to camps. So I think some people are going to camps because they need you know, help, um, and that's because of societal changes. We're also breaking down the stigma associated with mental health, so more people are coming forward. That's a, that's a positive thing. So we're, sort of, we're, we're stage one on a multi-stage journey, I would say. In terms of what schools can do to help children make sure that they have good mental health, I suppose they don't always have to spend money, they don't have to invest in special spaces or classrooms, do they? There are things they can do for free. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think schools can do work, parents can do work, charities like our charity can do work. And you know, it, I don't think it needs to be all loaded on the heads and the, and the teachers, because that's not fair on them, parents and, and everyone else. One of the big underlying causes of the deterioration in children's mental health is social media and technology and access to that. Um, so that's where parents have really got to work out what the rules are for their family as well. Um, and then schools like Aureus do a fantastic job. So, you know, others can learn from them. And the event today, we had other schools coming in and learning from what the Aureus are doing. So, I, I, again, I praise that bit of work and that best practice sharing as well. Social media is a difficult one to challenge, isn't it? Because it's on the phones all the time. And if the children have the phones in their bedrooms, they have the phones at school, there's no escape from it. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's right. And, uh, I mean, I've seen the health secretary is having the boss of Instagram in to meet him in two days' time to say you can't allow these images of self-harm and suicide to, to remain on that network. And, you know, I think that's really important. I think the scrutiny that's being put on those social media companies now is incredibly important. We must remember, of course, social media is actually very, very beneficial for some people who might feel isolated or don't have uh, 
friendships in in sort of the physical world and, and can make connections in, in the, the the virtual world as well so it's not all bad but i think a lot of fingers fingers are being pointed that way at, at, in an appropriate manner Daniel, thank you